Let's talk about VLSI physical design automation. What I've got here is a little circuit. I've got an inverter marked with A. Input is going to get flipped to the output. Most of you have probably seen Boolean circuits. Output runs into this NAND gate. Notice an AND gate with an inverter. I've got a NOR gate down there and also another AND gate. And I've labeled them A, B, C, and D. And most of you probably know how these things work. This is sort of the symbolic vision of how you would have build a circuit. And I want to talk a little bit about how you turn it into the actual silicon, something like this A4 processor. Down at the low level, you've got a NOT gate. And again, this is sort of a schematic diagram. How it's actually going to get implemented is you've got a power line across the top, and it's going to connect to a P transistor. You've got an N transistor down at the bottom. And then this input drives a polysilicon wire that's going to turn either on the P transistor, so you can connect to power, or on the N transistor down below, so you can connect to ground. This is actually manufactured in three dimensions. So let's spin this thing around and take a little bit of a look. You've got power and ground on top level, inputs and outputs also on the metal layer. And I'll move it around here. And we've got the P transistor over on the left-hand side, N transistor over on the right. And then the polysilicon wire is going to control and turn on and off individual transistors. Let's spin this guy around a little bit more. Top view again, the black boxes are the vias between the layers of connect. There are those transistors. And the output is over on this side. Input is over on this side. It seems pretty remarkable, but you can actually take a look and see the individual transistors and wires on at least some of these older chips. Here are some nice photos from Professor Ricardo Hayes out of uh, Brazil, where he took some old 68000s, Zilog Z8000s, ground them down, put them under a microscope, and you can actually see what's happening at the circuit level. This is one of Professor Hayes' chips. So the whole point of VLSI physical design automation is to sort of hide away the ugly, scary transistor stuff, and you can replace the circuit itself with just rectangle and a few connection points, and deal with that when you're trying to design and figure out where everything goes. So this NOR gate is just a box with a couple of connection points. There are transistors inside, but it makes it a lot easier to think about. So you can take the circuit where you had NAND gates, NOR gates, inverters, and rather than dealing with the actual transistor level, we're just going to deal with rectangles with connection points. So let's take a look at a real design, or at least as close to real as we need to get. What we have here is what we'll call a mixed block design. There are lots and lots of standard cells here in the middle, and these are individual AND gates, OR gates, inverters, small sort of stuff like that. You can also build what they'll call macro blocks, slightly bigger, which may have complex circuitry inside, something more complex than just a simple AND gate or gate, but not the whole chip itself. So I've got a big macro block over here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And so this is right here, an AND gate or something like that, another AND gate or gate, different functionality here. And this guy is connected by wires, something over here, up to here, off to there. Over here, another block connected to other things. And you can scan around. We've got some macro blocks that are connected to a few things. And so when we're doing VLSI physical design, what we're going to do is take a circuit diagram, basically AND gates, OR gates, all that sort of junk, turn each one of these into a rectangle. There's a stage called placement, which is figuring out where each of these rectangles sits when you're going to put it onto a chip. And there will be a second stage called routing, where we decide wire goes from here, down and over, over to here. We have to run all the wires so they don't intersect and don't short out. And once we've done that, we can send this off to the foundry. They can turn it into the transistors and actually fabricate the chip. In order to be able to take a design from something that's generated by tools from a circuit designer off to the foundry, there's some standard file formats that get used, get used for interchange. And I'll say they're standard, and the great thing about standards is there are so many to choose from. But this is a LEF file. This is a Cadence LEF file. And it's a library exchange format file. Let me quickly walk through some of the key things. Lots of different versions over the years. This is version 5.8, which is fairly current. And you'll note, it specify what sort of uh, size units. Every process technology generation gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And so they're telling you how big things are and also the manufacturing grid. This is going to change for which foundry, whichever foundry you wind up using. 
and they're going to specify the area that you can place and work in. Normally you have multiple metal, metal layers for routing, so we've got we're calling it metal one. It is a horizontal, so wires are allowed to go horizontally. And there's a width and an area and spacing constraints for this metal layer. And then there's a via that will go from metal one to metal two. And here's metal two. You might note they have different minimum widths, minimum areas, minimum spacings. Every metal layer or many metal layers are different, generally getting wider as you go up in the, in the stack. And some more metal, more vias, things like that. And I'll keep zooming down. Specifying what a via between layers looks like, what constraints it has. And here we have our standard cells. Not sure which one this is. Uh, I think an inverted and, and or something like that. And they're going to specify how big the rectangle is. So when we were sketching out a rectangle for a NAND gate or a NOR gate, that's how big it is. And also, you can mirror these things along the X or Y direction and have it still work. And within that, that's a standard cell, there are pins where you can connect. So these are the connection points where you connect a wire to connect to your AND gate or your OR gate. And frequently, there are multiple spots where you can connect a wire on, because if you actually, if you recall the spinning around in 3D model, lots of places you could hook up a wire. I'm calling this pin A0, pin A1, different spot, pin B, pin C, pin D. And there's also connection points for power and ground. So VDD is your power, VSS is your ground. And these are normally sitting at the top and bottom of a standard cell so that you can just snap them one right after another in alignment and the power and ground lines will automatically match up. The other file format to look at is the def file, design exchange format. So the library, LEF, will specify what the standard cells look like and what sort of routing resources you have. The def file will specify the actual design. We're going to arrange things into a series of rows. So horizontal row, here's the first row, second row, third row. X and Y locations and how long the row is and things like that. There's also a routing grid, so tracks going horizontally and vertically so that everything lines up, and then the actual components. And so we've got a name instance 2015. It's a NAND gate. We have decided to place it at this location on the chip. This N means it's oriented vertically, painting, pointing north. There are eight different directions you could point things for north, south, east, and west, and you can also flip them, so rotate 90 degrees. So. And so we've got another NAND gate, OR gate, buffer, so on and so forth. So these are just simple logic gates and specified where they are. To connect things, we're going to connect this instance, so this is going to be an AND gate, pin A to another gate here, pin Y. And these connections are normally referred to as nets. We have 11 nets and net 1, 2, 3, 7 connects these two things together. In a routed design, you might also specify where the pieces of metal wire are. This is sort of a high level view of VLSI physical design automation. We go from a circuit diagram into standard cells, put the standard cells onto a chip, and then the run wires together. Once we've got all that figured out, it gets bundled up into left and def files, sent off to the foundry, and the foundry will do the manufacturing.